going on, the Pain Aided family? How you guys doing? What's up, what's up? We're here. It's another lovely Sunday evening. And again, I sound like a fucking radio host. <laughs> You're so weird. Quiet Storm Kev. So yeah, I, hate, I always do that. I hate doing it. I, but I got to welcome the people into the show. This is the only way I know how to do it. Sound like a fucking radio host. So, oh shit, I got the wrong topic up. God damn, I'm fucking up. Good job, buddy. Yeah, I know. Hips. Ten signs of an unhealthy relationship. That's what we're talking about today. I got the right shit up. Now we can move. These you want to give them all ten? I'm gonna give them a. I'm gonna give them a good health. Good healthy dose of bad internet. <laughs> a good dose of bad internet. Yo, I told this nigga, get yourself gig speed. You got you. You keep operating off of fifty-seven megabytes. It ain't gonna work, bro. You got to get rid of the dial up. We can't see you if you're there. Uh, I know. I, I can hear up. you. I fucked everything up trying to be cool. There you go. I'm trying to be cool and, and like close my computer. So I'm looking at. Listen. Okay. We're going to give him a. We're going to give him 10 things of an unhealthy relationship. You know, I'm going to start this conversation. We're going to move this conversation along. Help some people out. Maybe relationship. Is maybe your relationship is fucked up and you don't even know it. Maybe you're just going through the motions, but we're gonna try to help you Wait, figure this shit the fuck out. Heterosexual relationships, and that's relation it. relationships. I I don't know nothing about. Um, I guess that we call it gay relationships. Debatable. Yeah, I don't. I don't. It, they're. I guess they're the same. They're both the same. No, they're not. Uh, for the most part, both things are the same. One goes like this. <laughs> the other one goes like this. The other one goes like this. <laughs> hey, listen. In the bedroom, it might switch up. <laughs> a little different. Yeah, a little different in the bedroom. But for the most part, I think love is love. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. Me personally. Love is love. The bedroom, it might be a little different. You know what I mean? But as far as general, y'all being together and all that other shit, that shit's all the same. It's no mm. different. Love who you love. You know what I'm saying? Real, before you get started, speaking of um, speaking of uh, those types of relationships, y'all heard of uh, Freddie Gibbs spreading uh, trichodecophobia? What's that shit called? What the fuck is that? Tr- tr- some shit. Trichonomius or some shit. It's like a really bad sexual disease, sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> Never mind. We can, How we the can fuck did on. he get that? I don't know. We can move on, though. <laughs> God damn, that nigga got trickle dick anemia. <laughs> Look, I might as well be called that shit. They calling that nigga Spready Gibbs. <laughs> Freddie Gibbs, wear a condom, dog. <laughs> you out there fucking bitches bare back as your life fucked up. That shit, right? That shit crazy, dog. You you gonna run into the real? You gonna run into the real motherfucker? You gonna run into the AIDS and HIV? Keep trying to spread shit. The gift that keeps on giving. And yeah. giving. Freddie Gibbs is crazy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. Actually. Ah, you, know, you, sorry, know, brother. you you out there, you out there giving people the little monster. You're gonna run into the big monster, and that big monster gonna put you the fuck down. Yeah, that nigga got an uppercut like a motherfucker. He put you down. Yeah, so all yeah. right, man. Let's get into these 10 signs of the unhealthy relationship, man. The first one on the agenda, man, for unhealthy relationships is lack of trust. We okay. it, Basically, I, that that is like the that is the most obvious one, man. The lack of trust, you know, can't survive. It can't. No, like right now, I can leave my phone unlocked. I can leave my phone at home. I can leave my phone in the opposite room. I can leave wherever my girl. She can take my phone if she needs it. Mm. I know, ain't nobody gonna call that shit out of pocket. I know, ain't no text message gonna come through there crazy. I know. You know, I ain't going to get no weird message on Messenger or some shit like that or somebody DMing me. So it's like, it's cool. My shit ain't even locked up. I ain't even got no passcode on my phone. It's because it's Android. I mean, I, <laughs> I can have a bitch. I can have a fingerprint on that motherfucker. Fuck it you. doesn't make it no better. So they steal your fingerprint. <sighs> uh, <laughs> wait till you sleep with your hand on your phone. Yeah. Uh, but I don't I have a lock on my phone, but that's not because. I'm worried about my wife going through my phone it's in case somebody tries to take my shit or I lose my shit. I don't want access to anybody just having it, but my wife has a passcode to my phone. So it's kind of like, you know what I mean? There's no, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't make it so it's inaccessible. And then I got a watch. 
I leave everything in plain sight. I don't have to worry about shit. You know what I'm saying? So it do you think do y'all think the reason why we understand that is because we just boring ass niggas? And I'm and, and hold on, this is what I mean when I say that. It's motherfuckers out there who actually just out there, they're not necessarily doing dirt, but they might have female acquaintances, they might have people that call them and shit like that. You think it's just because we just boring motherfuckers? Nah, bro. I got I work with females at my job, so I got females. Uh, they're not so necessarily ugly. I got females that work at my job that have to call my phone because I'm a shop steward. But I know they're not going to call my shit on the wild ass shit. Now, a couple years ago, nigga, I would never, ever leave my phone unattended. I hmm. left my phone unattended before it came home to no relationship. <laughs> To no, yo, coming home to you, no relation, not even an ending, but no, it's crazy. But that's <laughs> but that's the risk you run if you're doing shit like that. You was reckless though, bro. I came With home. That. I came home to her packing her shit. Like I left for a good minute and came back, and she was already beginning to pack her shit. I'm like, oh my god. Well, what would you do? Have her shit packed. <sighs> if, it, if, it, if it, but that's that trust factor. Like yeah. when you break that trust. Because that person put all their trust in you. Because we get all right, shit. We get very uh we get very spoiled with the way we have our relationships now. The trust was already tested. That's why it's a beautiful thing. The trust was already tested. So right now you walk out this house or walk out your house every day with your trust in your partner, taking it for granted. But when that trust is broken, a lot of people can't handle that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people can't handle it. That's true. Nah, nah, that the trust thing is the trust thing is the most I call that like one of the main keys in your relationship. You gotta have that trust. You gotta be <laughs> able to say, like, like, like the trust. I can tell my my girl can go out by herself with her girlfriends, and I can feel at ease that I know ain't gonna be no niggas in her face. She ain't gonna come back with no wild, no, no, you know, no numbers in her phone, or we out. And she bump into some nigga and, and and she's trying to duck him. Like, I don't got to worry about that shit. I ain't got to worry about her not coming home that night. You know what I'm saying? Like, that that should be, everybody should be able to say, hey, girl, where your girl at? Oh, she went out with her girlfriends tonight. Like, I, I you know what I'm saying? You should be cool with that. If you got to be fucking calling her every two minutes and, oh, who did she leave with? Or that motherfucker come back and the sun's up. Mm. Yeah, the trust is gone. Nah, you can listen. Trust is trust is probably one of the most pivotal things in any relationship. I don't care if it's family or um your significant other or you know, even a business partner. Trust is a is a building block of that relationship. And once it is, so it can be fractured and then it could be broken. Trust. If it's fractured, it's reparable. It's it's not irreparable. I said that right. Um you you can build back on it and and that person has to just prove those things like prove prove that part of the, themselves to you if you're in a relationship with somebody they would have to be there when they're supposed to be there they they would have to you know make sure they tell you the truth and that you can believe them you'll go through some uncomfortableness but once it's broken and you know that person like straight up don't give a fuck or whatever then time to move on yeah. what what problems or situations do you constitute to make it fracture and what ones would make it broken getting a text message from a person and saying who is that right who is that that's a friend from work why are you talking to this friend from work oh well you know maybe it was something that you don't deem to have gone that far i don't know you know i'm just giving out like i'm not saying what i would do but if it's something that hasn't gone that far you might be able to nip it in the bud there, but they have to build back on that. Hey, you know, you know, that's, that's not the behavior that I expect from you. And if they agree to that, then you can begin to mend that, you know what I'm saying? Or vice versa. When that person just gets caught cheating, if you it, broken is I caught you with a person in the bed or I caught you outright. That's not, there's done. nothing you can say to most people. There's nothing you can say to come back from that and say, Oh shit, my bad. It was a mistake. Like you get what I'm saying? I think I I think I know a nigga that called his girl in bed and they got back together. I would like to see. I would like to talk <laughs> to the person to understand what the fuck was in their brain. Because what, what else do you need to see? Uh, I guess you know you apologize. I mean, shit, nigga, I'll. Bro, I've been caught in the bed with a female before. 
By who? Your mother? Nah, by my girl. We wound up breaking up, but we wound up becoming friends after that. Like, I, I know was... what I know what you're talking about. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's a different yeah. situation, bro. That's that's a you even didn't know, try to work you it didn't out know where she was at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's different. I'm talking about you go to work every motherfucking day. You to provide for your family. You do what you got to do, and you come home after saying you on a business trip. You come home early, and there's a motherfucker in your bed with your girl. What you doing? Putting the meats to her, and she in there hollering. You ain't never heard a scream like that. A lot of dudes probably fucking faint, pass out if he be putting it to her. No, I'm gonna tell you exactly <laughs> what happens. Trust. We still yeah. talking about trust. What yeah. happens is your fucking heart starts going like this. And that's see, that's when murders happen <laughs> because I'm serious. Because that's true. It's people, true. people think that when that happens, you're just in control of the situation and you're just gonna be clear headed. No, your heart is like this, your adrenaline is fucking through the roof, and you are literally in a you're literally like, okay, yeah, something I, has to happen for me to get this adrenaline out, which means somebody might have to die. You have. You have an out of body experience. <laughs> only way to yeah. only way to you, release his adrenaline is murder. That, or you, you, you have that, a, or you leave. You, do you have an out of at that point. Fight or flight. Have, yeah, fight or flight. But you have an out of body experience. It's like you can't you can't fathom what you are seeing right now because you trust and you love this person so much. You trust them that you can leave and do these things, and you had that much trust, and so you're like, this is not. Yeah, at first, the first thing, like, this is not real. And then when it comes when that, yo, this is happening right now, then it's like, like you said, you shut down. Your brain just says, fuck everything. You black out. Next thing you wake up to two bloody bodies. And the cops is looking at like, what did you do? I don't know. I don't know. I just got here. <laughs> my brain. My brain. <laughs> I was there. I was yeah. still at work. You know what I'm saying? That, <laughs> that shit is crazy. Trust and see, see, and see what about the trust. And when you break a tr person's trust, man, the next thing that comes into the, that factor into the relationship is another thing is an unhealthy relationship the constant criticism and blame. Now, I hate you blaming this person constantly for cheating on you or for doing you wrong, or you criticizing them for their decisions they make, you know, of cheating on you, but it, it doesn't always got to be be necessary there somebody could be just blaming you for you know you down in your luck right now you may be out of a job and they and you're trying to get back to work and they're constantly criticizing you and blaming you for everything falling apart while you're trying your best to keep it together that's two, another sign of an unhealthy relationship two big modes of blame one is a inner issue when you blame it could be an inner issue or it's a product of fra fractured trust Inner issue is I blame everybody for my problems. So you the motherfucker that I spend the most time around. Yo, you the reason why this should be happening. <laughs> you the reason why I lost my job. You the reason why I can't get ahead. You bitch. You the reason why I can't do that. You the reason why I can't do that. That's an inner issue. That's something that's in your brain and it's broken. And you got to talk to a motherfucking therapist. And then fracture trust is the blame, like the blame of where was you at? Yo, you say he's gonna be home at five thirty, but you but you home at six o'clock. Both are inner issues, but that's more of like, yo, she broke my, you know, what I mean, she broke my trust one time, and now I don't trust her. It's still trust, but you should, if you have to blame somebody every day for that, or or constantly bring that up, I don't think you should be with that person. If you can't forgive and let go, you can't forgive and let go with her because she cheated on you, and you're trying to work by that but you're constantly blaming her and criticizing her for that. At that point, I think you should move on. You'll be happier in life. You won't have to worry about where she's at. You won't have to criticize her for walking in the door five minutes late, even though, she, you know, she, you know, you don't know traffic by the habit or blame her for somebody, a guy saying a funny joke to her and she laughs too hard at this shit. You know what I'm saying? At that point, you should go. Like you should really think about considering yeah, going. You're already, you're already at the point of insecurity. All right. Once, the, especially when the the trust factor is pretty much dissolved in your mind, and are you really trying to work it out for you and y'all? Are you trying to do something for them? Because at the end of the day, when you're in a situation that you feel as though you don't trust somebody, every day is a fucking obstacle course. 
of emotions with shit that you go through with them. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be you heard something on the radio to make you remind you of the bullshit or they do something which makes you remind you or say, oh, man, they slipping into the ways that they did this scenario. You know what I mean? Or or now you see them liking something or on Instagram or Facebook and now you're second guessing stupid shit that you never second guessed before. This is it's, it's just yeah, it's just a slippery slope of you being unhappy, even more insecure, and probably damaging a situation for the next relationship that you're going to get into because you're so stuck into the bullshit that you're just letting and allowing happen to you at this point. Let me ask both of y'all. <clears throat> do y'all ever take time, true time, to really do some self-evaluating? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Every Friday, every Friday night, Saturday night. It's the same. It is. I sat. I sat can't down. Tell me what's the same and what's not for me. I I Man. sat down one time. I don't think so, but you got it. I, I mean, sat down one time for. What do you uh, hold on? What do you consider self evaluating? I take time at the end of every week, and I pretty much go through my faults, my my wins, my losses, the stuff that I can't stop myself from doing, even though I want to do it. How I can try to evolve myself. And maybe take it into effect, and it can last. For, it can last for like a week, and then I fall back into the slump of, you know, what I'm used to being. Um, okay. I, I can't know, just, right. just, I can't just tell content because that, that's correct. Content, just content on on me just being who I am, and then sometimes I'll even look at myself and be like, "Man, fuck this!" Like, like, like every every time I talk about health situations, I like for a week I'll. I'll do intermittent fasting and I'll be on a good roll and then I'll come to a cookout. You know what I mean? And and it'll be like, oh, I'll be good. And be like, no, fuck that. I'm about to eat this cake. You know what I mean? That that fuck that switch click clicks in and it's hard for me to to give it the stiff arm. You know what I mean? And, and, and not revert myself back to it. But I always reflect on shit like that at the end of the week and how can I how can I change my mindset? Yeah, let me apologize to you. For for assuming that you you were just over exaggerating because you're not you were you're you're that's yeah like let me apologize because I'm thinking you just saying like nah nigga you know I be I didn't think you were actually being honest I thought you was saying that y'all smoke week. every weekend right. so that's what it every does Friday so that's, or that's my fault I take a little time to myself I mean there's sometimes where I'm thinking about it and it breaks me down to a point where it's you feel like nothing sometimes, you know what I mean? And sometimes, like, if I'm having good weeks and I'm winning, I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I just bust out this crazy 60-hour week at work. I know this check is going to blossom, and I'll have things to look forward to the next week when I have to pay this or pay that. And I'll, after I pay my bills, I won't be totally broke. You know what I mean? That's a win in my column, you know what I mean, for the week anyway. But little, just little shit like that to help me build on my character and, and who I'd rather be opposite you know what I mean to who I am now. So that, bringing let's bring this back into the topic that we're talking about now. That right there, you constantly reevaluating yourself. Some people do that because the relationship they're in, the opposite person they're with, is always fucking criticizing them about something they're doing. So you always got to fucking self evaluate yourself. That's why like, I asked. Sorry. yeah, yeah. Why why am I doing this? Like you know, you know. It, is she is she right and you fucking self evaluating yourself every other day because this person is constantly criticizing getting on your ass about something so you got to fucking self evaluate every week. Mm -hmm. If you're self evaluating every week because the person you with and you finally fucking at and you finally do this whole crazy math equation and you fucking got all this shit on the chalkboard and you finally get the <laughs> answer and the answer is. It's that. It's not me. It's the I'm other motherfucker. It's, it's the other person. It's that bitch. Person. It's that bitch. <laughs> Here's this this, whole time this I got a PowerPoint. The whole time I've been fucking with this fucking math equation, trying to figure out where I'm fucking up with all these numbers, and bitch, it equals you. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> you solve for X, and now she's the X. <laughs> it's your X. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there where I was like, man, I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. I got to do this. I got to do that. Yeah, man. You right. She right. She right. She right. She right. Bitch, no, you ain't right. 
No, I'm going crazy. Mean. I'm going crazy. I lost my hair because of you. Whatever you got to blame it on. So that's why I asked about the self-evaluating because it's like if you if you're doing that, if you're evaluating yourself, um, not to say everybody should do. You do what the fuck you want. I'm just saying yeah. like that. That's kind of where you come up with it's self-evaluating and your self-awareness. Like, yo, is it me or is it this person? Are we just a bad match? Like you get what I'm saying? Like you, you, you go into being critical of that person. If that person's being critical of you, if you're doing your own self-evaluating, you know, like, well, no, that doesn't make any sense. Like I'm not the laziest. I'm lazy, but I'm not the laziest motherfucker on earth. I'm not this. I'm not that. So that's why I asked that question earlier. Like I, I meant it. You know what I mean? Um, because listen, yeah. it's going to lead to the next topic. If you let a person self, you let a person criticize you and blame you too much, and you're doing that fucking self evaluating too much, leads into the next topic. It becomes into them having a controlling behavior over you. They start controlling you, not so much physically, but fucking mentally. Think about it. Never. But I'm saying it happens. You will start criticizing, you'll let them criticize you so much, and yeah. you fucking self evaluate so much. You don't realize you're being controlled by this person to guide you. Like, you know what? Maybe I do go out too much. Let me stay in the house this week. Maybe I do unnecessarily spend my, maybe I spent my money on myself too much. Maybe I should spend more on her. Maybe you're fucking second guessing yourself and, Yo. and you don't realize you're getting puppet mastered. So, you know what kills me with that? When that happens to people, they don't realize, like, you don't reach a point where you realize, like, Yo, this motherfucker is being controlling. You don't realize that? Some, if you're in love, I was in love like that before. Okay. I was in love Tell like that more. before. And I was blinded because I had did the I did the whole thing you talked about. I did the whole self-evaluating with when I was with this person because we was going through a downwards. I called up all my exes, let them fucking kill me about all the shit I fucked up in my relationship. And I took some of their advice and advice, and I'm just blinded by this shit. And this person, what was, what was some of the stuff they said? You got it. You got it. Come on, don't oh, tell us man. Don't tell what they said. Bro. You on. know, you all you got too many bitches in your phone. You party too much. So you just the you shit, hang, right? You did. I'm. I that's was. Why, that's why. That's why she wasn't fucking with you because you the shit. Uh huh. That's because you too much of the shit. That's why I'm just too. I was. I was too <laughs> outgoing. I. I speak to too many people. I laugh. Like she would tell me. Oh, every time a bitch guy say something, it's always funny. Or you always talking to everybody. You always in the middle. You just ignore me when we go out. Everybody's like. Remember, I used to be a person when I went out. Nigga, I'm. I got to be the center of attention. I got to tell all the jokes. I have stories. I got to make everybody laugh. I'm everywhere. Okay. I'm with this person. She's criticized me with this shit. So now I go out. I'm this hermit. I'm this quiet person. I'm in the corner. I'm excessively drinking. The party's going on, but I'm not involved in the party. I'm in the background. Why wow, this person's having the time of their life. But I couldn't see this because I'm just so in love. I am thinking I'm supposed to be with this person. I'm trying to change because I listen to all my exes. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Maybe it is me. Let me change. Not realizing I'm being controlled. And one day I woke up. And and when I woke up, it was like, bitch, I'm back. You and I told her that. I said, You're gonna hate me the day I wake up. I made it clear to Listen, her. did you so y'all was sleeping and you woke up and you tapped her on the shoulder and said, Bitch, I'm back? No, I ain't telling you, bitch, I'm I back. Would love, I would love to see nah. that in the movie. No, I I'm this you is what I told you. Like, the fuck? I told her this though hey, one time. You? We did was you leave? <laughs> we was together. I told this and I was I said, When you're gonna hate, I said straight, straight to her face, I said, You're gonna hate me. When I wake up and I become the person I used to be, I say, you're going to hate me when I come out of this slump. You're going to hate say, me. Did she, say, she looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah. And no, I said, okay. I'm leave you. Oh, I left. I but when I left, it wasn't. Too. Niggas know me. I got. I give zero fucks. I'm going to be happy about life. I'm going to want you to do good in life. If I don't fuck with you, I'm not trying to tear your life down. I'm praising you and I'm praying that you do good. I don't give a because motherfucker, I can give a fuck about you. I don't give a fuck if you had a million dollars or you fucking drive your car off a fucking cliff. Either way, my emotion is gonna be the same. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna change. I don't give a fuck if you're doing good or you're doing bad. My emotion won't change. So I don't give a fuck about what you're doing. That basically lets you know I don't give a fuck about what you got going on in your life. My emotions will never change. That's a, what anybody I don't care about. I'm sorry. 
Yo, that's 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 a, how you know that your relationship was definitely unhealthy. Yes, you know what I mean because if even even if it doesn't work out for a couple, it can be in a scenario where you know it just didn't work out, and you know I don't want to see nothing bad happen to you. We just not compatible. Shit happens, you know what I mean. This down the third, and y'all cool later on. But when you are like, yo, you could kick the bucket tomorrow and i'll be like oh man that's crazy so what time does the game come on you know what i mean like don't have no care about in the world then that's an extremely unhealthy relationship because at one point you thought you loved this person that would have never came across your mind you know what i'm saying you 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 would have did whatever for this person and then the next day it's just like nah fuck that they could die that's a crazy shift in an emotional pattern. I'm not saying that you're wrong for it. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it was yeah. it is a it is a pure signature of you were in an unhealthy relationship. There was a lot of toxic things going on for you to go from one point of the spectrum within caring for a person to the complete opposite point in the spectrum to hating them. Because that's basically, I mean, you can't say that you don't hate them if you don't care uh, if they die or not. I don't you know what I'm that. saying? Like no, I, don't, I mean not, no, 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 I mean not, no, not, that's not. indifference. No, that I don't hate. I don't have to hate. I I can a person can a my a person that can live three houses down from me that I never met day in my life can die, and I wouldn't care. It's just because I don't I don't know them. Cool. But you no would hatred. still say something like, "Wow, I'm sorry to hear that." You know what I'm saying? I, I be like, "It's crazy." I'm like, but but that's for you to be, be like, "Yo, you could die tomorrow," and I'd be like, mm, oh, "Can I jump in?" Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so there, there's a difference between uh, hating and indifference. And I know what Kev is talking about. And I, I think you do, too. You do, I know too. the difference between the two, but... No, no, no. No, I mean, like, the feeling. The, the feeling that he's describing. The, 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 the indifference feeling. Basically, it's when you turn your emotions off. You don't, you, don't phys- you don't actually do it, though. It's like something that clicks in your head and you like... You literally, like, whatever, like... I don't oh, care. Yeah. The emotional tie, however it got broken, the emotional tie is broken now. So now it's like you are now like anybody else in this world to me. Yeah, Meaning, okay. if you die, not to say it won't affect me at all, but damn, that's crazy. And you move on with the rest of your life because now you might as well be that person that lives three doors down from me. The same because they did something successful. Is broken. Say the same as this, uh, if the, it's just if they're coming to great success, right? It has nothing to do with you. Let me let me let me let me add something there, right? Because I thought this was very very interesting. I knew a person who got cheated on. They knew something was wrong when their wife started saying when when good stuff happened for him, like he got a new job or he got a, a promotion. The wife would say, "Y'all, I'm glad for you." That's good for you. Not that's good, period. She would make a point to say, that's good for you. I'm glad for you. Putting up that, like, nigga, we, like, it ain't us no more. Mm-hmm. And it's a subtle thing that you don't, you have to pay attention to. And if you got, if something bad happens to you, you're going to be paying attention. But it's so, it's so subtle, but it's that person that's, that, that personal connection that y'all had, that emotional connection is broken. Mm-hmm. And they don't feel that for you anymore. It's crazy. I think it's profound, actually. And that, that's another good topic: emotional abuse. You abuse my emotions so fucking much that you forced me to feel this way towards you. You emotionally abused me so much that I felt, you know, what I'm saying that you just did this to me emotionally that I felt I have to feel this way about you. I, I don't have no. It's no hatred or no malice. It's nothing. I don't like. I said I, the. If you won the lottery. My feelings will be the same if you died the next day. I don't. It has nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? Stop, stop mentally killing people, though. I'm saying. I'm just saying. Congr- it's congrats. It's all right. That's what's up. Congratulations. And I keep it pushing. Or winning the lottery that's, or dying. Or, 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 or damn, that's bad. I keep pushing. I don't go. I keep going. My day keeps going on. You know what I'm saying? My day keeps going. It's like, okay. I don't. There's no need to no need to further this conversation along because I don't really care about this person or for this person. I, what you want me to say? No, you hate him. Uh, nah, I don't hate. It's just like, hey, that's what's up. I don't. I would never wish no evil. I don't wish. I, you see, when you hate a person, you wish evil upon them. You wish them to fail in life, not succeed in life. No, no, no. 
hey man, listen, live your live your life, do the best. More blessing to you, but stay the fuck over there with it. You get what I'm saying? Do your thing, enjoy life. So you're just hating on them. I don't. How do you hate on a person if you if if, if oh, something you. you don't? Okay, if I'm not wishing you downfall and I'm wishing you, <coughs> I'm praying that you have all the great success in life. I'm not hating on you. It's, man, hey man, that's what's up. He said, just don't bring your don't bring your great bring your bullshit my way. Right. Don't, don't, bring, don't bring your don't bring your bullshit. Don't think, don't think, you do don't think that because you're doing good. Area. Don't think you do because you're doing good. I'm supposed to be like, don't hey, shine oh, your light let's, over here. Yo. Oh, let's let's celebrate. Oh no, bitch. <laughs> Congratulations. As far as goes. <laughs> yo, Stiff <laughs> Arm and a nigga to congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> There's no need to hug me. And congratulations, though. I'll keep it pushing, like yo. That touch barrier, yeah. yeah. Cutting that shit off. That's what. But yeah, I'm just good. saying, cause you, yeah. you what haven't been emotionally abused in a relationship where they like, no, like, 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 want to see you cry, or they happy that they, you're fucking sad. Gaslit. Like, yes. You get what I'm saying? Like, they don't give a fuck about nothing you're going through in life. Your, your mom dies, or your friend dies, and it's like. Uh, cares I, when you when they, you need their hug or their touch that's getting emotionally abused I, I think it goes deeper than that emotionally abused can can be more with words yes with words hey whenever you come home all i'm doing is this to you all i'm telling you is or you ain't shit or you this mm -hmm. you that like it verbally abused to me is emotionally abusing you know what i'm saying going out with niggas and basically you come like I feel like the the men who get emotionally abused are they're not weak. It's they, but they're more like it's it's like they're more susceptible mentally. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, damn, I don't want to say weak. You can say weak, but say it. You're fucking weak, but weak because they're allowing themselves to be emotional. Like you don't recognize that this this woman is basically telling you you ain't shit. Making you do shit like they're they're manipulative, mm -hmm. they're easily manipulated. There we go. If you're emotionally, if you're a man and you're getting emotionally abused, you're easily manipulated. I'm talking about your partner. Is that yeah. that makes That's sense? Cool. Yeah, you, you can say they're weak. Don't mean you can't be strong again, man. That we're saying that you're weak, you but you're weak me. right now. I don't give a fuck. You can hate what I'm saying. Yeah, y'all fucking weak right now. You'll get your balls back though. Some men don't. I hope they, hey, but if the ones who do, when they do, whoever they with, you bet, chick, you better watch the fuck out. Let me let me ask you a question, real shit, yeah. related to what you're just saying. Do you think that a men men have a better chance of rebounding when those types of things happen early in their life? Let me tell. Let me let me tell you. Younger, I mean, yeah, that me, you, yeah. you still have the ability to deal to be yeah. out. Let me let me hold on. Let me let me let me put, let me put some more let me put some more mayonnaise on that. Go ahead. <laughs> when you are 50 and you and you have to recover, imagine you put yourself in those shoes. You're 50 and you got to recover from some shit like that. And you've been probably with this person 20, or 30 years. 20, or you're 25. 25, you can recover because you. how how long have you really been in, in a relationship with this person for 20, if you're 25? At the most, they say six years. But at least for the first two or three years, you're young. That's just lust. The next five is like, uh, it's like, I'm still young. I still got time ahead of me. I still look good physically. At 50, you might have been with this person in your 20 for 30 years. This person knows everything about you. And you get, like, I'm comfortable. My girl knows everything about me. So it feels good. To have her emotionally abuse me and, and, and start to take that away from me, have to rebound from that, it's like, oh, my God. It's like. How am I going to do it without her? Can you rebound? Can you rebound? Kev, I want to hear your, your answer no, as well. No, I, I probably not. Probably not. I mean, I guess it really depends on the time frame that you've been with the person, regardless of what age you are. I mean, if you're, if, you're, if, if you're with a person for 15 years mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you end up, and you're younger, if you're, if you're with a person for 15 years and, what, you're 25 breaking up with them? Topanga and Corey Matthews, but go ahead. That nigga, man. He's so I mean, it could be. It, it, I'm, I'm just saying, saying that compar comparatively, five I, years to a 25 year old, it could be related to 15 years. You understand what I'm saying? But please continue. 
I feel as though you're more resilient when you're younger because mm -hmm. you'll have that chance to meet somebody else. You'll have mm -hmm. that chance to 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 go through that time of you being upset, learning about them, learning about yourself, um, mm -hmm. and run into someone new. That still got her titties um, up. Yeah, that, and and and, and, <laughs> and will last and will last with you still. You know what I mean? Keep I'm up. coming back to that though. When you're when you're <laughs> titties, I yeah, feel I'm coming back to that. Yeah, I feel like when you're the older you get and the more time you spend with a person, as soon as that relationship ends, and if it ends negatively, the next person that you have to deal with, you're you're going to be a little bit more cold-hearted towards you know what i'm saying there's a lot of shit that you won't let slide there's mm -hmm. a lot of shit that you'll be like nah yo i'm not i'm not doing that i've been with this person for so long and i'm not taking that shit no more so if that's you you're out the door now mm -hmm. you know what i mean and and it'll give people less of a chance to actually last through any type of relationship because you'll just start seeing shit and automatically be like nope been here before not doing it i don't have you'll say to yourself you don't have the time mm -hmm. to deal with shit like that you know what i mean young people go through bullshit all the time like yo that's crazy because they do it still you know what i mean they do it and the people do it to them you know what i mean it's a revolving circle of of them trying to find out who they are in life we were there you know what i mean at this point with me being 40 about to be 40 I look at my wife and I'm like yeah yo if you was ever do something like that you might as well just call it quits you know what I mean because I'm out of here and that's just that and back to Dre about, about being 50 you're more about the saggy titties. Titty, saggy titty shit you're more at that age you're looking for a companion than you are I mean you do look at them physically they do gotta look good but you're looking for you're looking at somebody that hey man you know I can see myself being around you. I can see myself being with you. You, you I can have see myself a, liking your care. Yeah, you have good energy. You got a mm -hmm. good spirit. You know, I feel vibrant when when we're together. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The last person emotionally abused me badly. But every time I'm with you, I always feel built up. Built up this warmth in my chest. I feel, you know, I feel great. I feel good about myself. You make me. When you that's what happens when you get that age. It's like that's the person you're looking for. Somebody, somebody to build you up, not to tear you down. You get what I'm saying? You've been mm -hmm. tore down emotionally in your last relationship. And you've been with that person for 30 years. Now, you like you said, Kev is right. You will be quicker to be say, quicker to say, yo, we're done if they're a fucked up person. But if you find somebody at 50 that's hey, well, like, damn, bro, why you with her? Like, I nigga, whatever. I know how you may think she look, but motherfucker, what she does for me. Whoa. Hey, I'm real. I don't give a fuck how you think she might look, but what she does for me is way beyond that. Motherfucker, you can't understand. Kev, you, look, you, been in the, you been in the why you been with her moment? Yo, Kev, why, why you with her, yo? Her ass is fat. But mine's was really different. Like, her ass is fat. Motherfucker, bro. Yeah. Bro, oh God, listen, let me stop you right there. <laughs> that should never be your motherfucking reason. Ever. No, no, no. <laughs> that should never be your reason. But that's younger. But I'm, <laughs> saying, but I'm saying, if I'm older and they like, years ago. I'm like, 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 because I let's be real. But let, I was younger. Yeah, I was younger. But I'm saying at 50, hey, yo. and she has a pretty face, but she's a little older, <laughs> and she's a bigger girl. She's like, what the fuck? Or her face might be might not because you gotta be somewhat attracted to her when you see her. Maybe her face think. look she's pretty her ass was fat apparently. Yeah, she's pretty apparently. But she, she's a little <laughs> she's a little she's a little bigger. Or maybe she got a bad body or the face is a little fucked up. I'll accept that. <laughs> yeah. So meaning my like, body is the answer. Yeah, but I'm saying that ain't the answer. But at 50, you at 50 and 60, listen. Motherfuckers break down. We all break down. I'm getting dark circles around my eyes. We break the fuck down. Let's get it. Let's be real. It's only people that are in shape or in fit that look good after they're 50 or 60. They still fucking people younger than them. Let's we be still, real. So okay. our pool we strengths. Still better, we still look better than the other. The other. Black, uh, yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, but bro. but think about it, Dre. At 50, <laughs> at 55 and 60, your dating pool shrinks. You gotta see what you can fuck, what you can fuck with sexually, 
And then you also got to see what you can fuck with emotionally. What do you look for first if you're 50? Uh, at 40. Because what do you admit, look for first? I'm at, serious. At, I'm still going to be looking. You got to be have a cute face. Your body, I don't care. At that point, everybody that had kids. Appealing. Appealing. Gotta you be. can be big. I don't care as long as you're cute. That doesn't That's necessarily it. make you not appealing. You have to appeal <sighs> to a person what they like. Some people like big girls. Some people like small girls. Some niggas like ugly women. You know what I mean? Like they just, they just <sighs> like. Ugly women. Yeah, and, I, I know and, niggas and, like that. I, listen, what's I ugly gotta, to me is not ugly to someone else. You know what I mean? I gotta wait. I gotta Tyler. wait. Let me cut like, off. All of us are ugly to someone, guaranteed. You yeah, know what I mean. <laughs> Andre, you're ugly to a lot of people. Shut up. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, you could be not attractive, but not ugly. But I'm saying, I give me a girl I mean, like... I, okay, I give you that. I give yeah. you that, but but still, it's, it's a thin line. <laughs> I, to hear a motherfucker say, that mother, don't bring that ugly motherfucker around here, I would be surprised. I would literally be like... You never heard a girl say, ew, that ugly nigga. What you, even when I heard it, I'm not younger, saying to you, I'm just saying about me. somebody, not yeah, but they ugly That's universally, they universally <laughs> ugly. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody agrees that there is no multiverse <laughs> where this nigga is ugly. Not <laughs> like, like, hold on, real quick. Y'all know damn well when a girl say, like, oh, I'm bring that ugly nigga, and you be thinking you like. <laughs> Yo, you right. <laughs> yeah, you know we got we got niggas that we hung out with and be like that. Like, oh shit, that nigga is ugly, but y'all ain't gotta tell this nigga. Like, you on. ain't gotta tell him. You know, universally ugly niggas, dog. But I'm but I'm saying let, 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 let's let's bring it back though. At fifty, like, come on, man, let's be real. So uh, that will bring me to one. I got two more topics I'm going to hit because okay. this kind of this kind of goes with and what we were just talking about. Feeling unhappy and and, and um, unfulfilled because we just talked about at fifty you're looking for somebody to make you happy and fill your needs. Right. If you're in a relationship now and you're not happy and you're feeling unfulfilled, like that that emptiness that you're constantly searching for. Have you like Dre? You've been married for a long time, so but. Uh, you, but you have had relationships. Have you ever, has anybody been in a relationship where they don't feel like, they feel like they're unfulfilled, like something is missing? Like something is always yeah. missing. Yeah, I don't stick around. You, but I mean a lot. You have an ex. I don't, yeah, I don't stick around. That's you don't stick you around for that. I, I, honestly, that comes with the self-awareness, right? The self-awareness, the self, um, what the fuck did I say earlier? Some stupid shit. Self, whatever. When you check in and whatever. That comes with that because you have to understand that First of all, you got to love yourself, right? You love yourself. If you love yourself, then you then you can love somebody else when it comes to that type of shit. So being unfulfilled, it, it it's hard to, it's hard for me, it would be hard to be unfulfilled at a year. That's something that happens way down the line where you like, yo, this shit ain't doing it for me no more. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like to me, it doesn't happen fast. Am, am I Am I off? No, no, continue. Keep cooking, bro. Man, you cook. Cook up. Mm, sausage is done. That's a crazy thing to be. That's a crazy about. thing to say, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm unfulfilled. I mean, <laughs> I'm unfulfilled. You're, unfulfilled. <laughs> You're unfulfilled in life. Nah, you can't be. You well, mean, yeah, in life. Yeah, in life. In life, yes. I'm looking. Yeah, in life. But yeah. you're. Yep, yeah, I'm talking Not about what you're part. How about unhappy? Shit, I'm changing yeah. that though. But nobody, nobody has. I'm guessing at one point in time you all had to feel unhappy in relationship and you might have hung in there a little longer than you were supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean, you yes. sometimes you you'll be unhappy, but you don't know that you're unhappy with the relationship. You could just be unhappy with that particular situation and you're trying to handle it, not realizing that you're just doing this out of maybe you feel obligated or maybe you know what i mean you just you just you just can't seem to get yourself out of the relationship because you're just stuck in in the ways of being content with this person or what you have not wanting to let go and start anew you know what i mean or you think you have you might have kids involved or something like that and keep you to keep you there you say you're doing this for some other reason which ultimately is a bad choice as well, because now everybody's unhappy, and now you just 
unhappy around kids. You know what I mean? It, <laughs> well, I nah, nah. I'm gonna I'm I'm hit you with it. I'm hit you another unhappy, unhappy around kids is funny. Nah, you know, if, I mean that's how it is though. That's why kids see their parents argue and fight. You know what I mean? They end up getting married and when they have kids, and the kids watch them get a divorce. Now the whole family is all fucking weird and shit. Okay, the hey, can I say something real quick about the unhappy thing about people may not know they're unhappy, but they be in an unhappy relationship. Mm -hmm. You might be unhappy because you might be saying to yourself, you know, we argue and shit's not going now, but you know what? That's just because of my financial situation. Mm. Maybe your financial situation starts to change, and you be like. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. well, maybe we she's still we still unhappy because we are still behind on all these bills and stuff. Even though we're ca we're starting to catch up, then you catch up on the bills. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe she, I'm unhappy. Oh, maybe she's maybe she's unhappy. Wait, because I'm working too much, but I gotta work because she was just unhappy when the bills wasn't being paid and I wasn't making enough money. But yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Nigga, you are unhappy. This your relationship is fucked up. You just did everything you supposed to do, and a motherfucker still. At some point in time, somebody got be like, "Damn, babe, finally you got a job." Damn, baby, yes, the bills is being paid and happiness been come back. Damn, baby, I know you working hard, but you're doing it for the both of us. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers don't realize that shit. Niggas just keep thinking I got to do the next step, and the next step, and the next step, and you still not find the happiness. Uh -oh. What's that? The definition of insanity. There, yep, there you go. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I'll, do, I'll do you one better. Go ahead, Dre. You're also progressing yourself in a crazy way. You are you're getting and, all these steps. Then when you then when you finally realize what's going on, now you and you let them go. You all all these steps up, man. That's a that's the I most did, I, I, situation. I, no, I did that shit. I did all them steps because I was in one, and god damn it, I'm in a good relationship right now with the person yeah. who deserves it. You step there up, you go. look at yourself like a superhero, I, like god you, damn. You're problem solving. Yeah. So you do have to you do have to do that to a certain extent because it's yeah. like, hey, let me make sure it's not me. Mm -hmm. But I'll do you one better. Most people will stay unfulfilled or stick in that situation because dun, 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 they don't want to be alone. Yeah, that's what I'm the, saying. Their biggest fear yep. that's is not having somebody to lay next to at night. Yep. Yep. There you go, buddy. That's facts. That's not a lie. That is that is facts. Or or losing that financial secondary that you had. You know what I mean? Y'all built y'all built y'all built this house to get y'all built these finances together where y'all have a house together. Or you know what I mean? You got pets. You got you got obligations that you both put in together. And now it's like, oh, you either don't want them to have it, or you don't want to lose it, or you don't want to lose the money that extra money is coming. Comfort, in. think like that. Yeah, it's just comfort. You live, you you living out of comfortability, but and don't want to get out of that mood. But. Then are you living? Don't be. That's that's because are, you, that's are you actually living? That's a homeless shit. Don't be. Or do, are you just existing? You just because that's really what it is. You you ain't living. You're existing. That's facts, dog. That is facts. Because all that shit is material. It can be replaced. What can't be re what can't be getting back, you can't get back is the time you wasted with this motherfucker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The energy that you put into this person, you can't get that energy back. It, it mm -hmm. dissipated and changed itself to became something different. All that it's shit cooking. you waste, all that shit you wasted on them, you could have been putting into something new mm -hmm. that you could have been you could have been benefiting from. It may look hard at the beginning when you start over, but at least you got somebody that's benefiting and they're happy that you're doing it for them. They're grateful that you're doing this for them. They're accepting you. They're bigging you up. They're pushing you. They're pushing you further and further and further. And he's like, man, um, you know, this is all I wanted in my last relationship. Yeah, it might have not been with Mindy, but Cindy's the one. Yeah, or 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 it doesn't even have to be another person. Yeah. You can embrace yourself. Yeah, that's you know true. I mean? Sometimes you gotta. All right, you you've been in this unhealthy Oops. relationship for so long that you you don't realize, nigga, you broken now. You mm -hmm. you are broken. You are not the person you was. Even when you say, "Oh, I'm back to me," you're not that person that you should you never was be before yeah. this relationship. And you need to check yourself. And sometimes you need that time alone to figure out. You know what I mean? Like, all right. Let me let me just get back to the basics of me. You know what I mean? Let me see where my grind is at again. Let me see how I am, you know what I mean, out in, in public with people and 
and you know what I mean how I how I am socially you know what I mean because you're not you might not have been that social person that you used to be once you get in this relationship like Kev said earlier you That's know what the I'm last saying one. you 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 might not be that oh, person that you you wanted to what? to or once was and and your thought process has changed you that's, know what I mean that's 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 interesting off of what you just said i think that when you get into that particular situation you might be scared of growth not even just being by yourself but maybe scared of growth some people are very resistant to growth but growth is a part of life everything everything grows everything organic grows oh that might be wrong but it seemed right in my head. Everything organic grows, bro. Nah, that's right. Like, you have to grow. So being resistant to that growth, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Saying that, yo, I'm not who I was before. Yo, you shouldn't be who you was before in any version. You have to be a different version. You have to grow into a different version. If you were, not you, Kev, but I'm just saying in general, if you're the type that parties all the time and you're with this, this new person and all of a sudden you don't party, you don't have to go back to partying mm. in order to be in order to be or in order to feel like yourself you could you could just be the type that goes out you know what i mean be more outgoing again but you have to do it in a different way so some people when they get into that situation and they feel like i ain't who i was yo you ain't got to be who you was but are you a better version of yourself because that's what you should be concentrating on exactly. even for your partner y'all should always try to strive to be a better version of myself i'm not the best version of myself right now i can tell you that right now but but i want to be there's a desire here. That's most, that's my desire, period. I want to be better than I was yesterday. If I, I can't be the person I was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that's, that's ridiculous. I don't want to be that person. He was stupid. That's why I'm here yeah. in both, in both cases. Yeah. That's why you're wherever you are. That's why you're there. You have to be better than what you were before. Yeah. So if you ain't striving for that and that person that you're with isn't akin to that version of you, you got a problem anyway, buddy. Well, that brings me into the last one. It's the last topic we're going to hit, man. Um, your, your values and your goals are different. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? Ooh. Your value and your goals are different. Contact I, King. So, people, when I say that, like, me and my girl got two different, like, we got different goals. Like, some shit might be different that we do, but our goals is the same thing. Our goals is to raise our family right. For our kids to be successful in life, um, to grow old with each other, to have money in our pocket and to travel. That is that is our goals, our values. You know what I'm saying? Our values is that we respect each other, that we both have respect for each other, that we both value each other's opinion and, and thoughts like that. That's something that we have in line with each other. Don't mean necessarily when people think your goals don't mean like, oh, I want to become a successful uh, real estate, you know, mom. I want to sell. And their goal is I want to be a, a veterinarian. That don't mean that your goals is not different. It's the same thing as y'all trying to get money. You get what I'm saying? Goals, yeah. That's just different life goals. Personal, but, professional. Yeah. But if this person goal is to have kids settle down and be married and live their life old with this person and the other person is not to have kids i don't really see this going to you know going too much further i just want to live life i'm in the moment <laughs> your goals is different here you are trying to settle this settle this wild person down but this wild person don't want to be settled down and you're constantly trying to make this fucking round pegs Fit into a round hole, Dre. You look like you have something on your brain, so say, it, baby. People stupid. <laughs> That's the problem. People stupid. Stop trying to make somebody into what you think they need to be for you. That's that's what you're doing. You're trying to make somebody what they what they need to be for you. Hey, that motherfucker told you, man. He told you he don't want no kids. You said nah. Give I think if me. you be with me long enough, you won't want kids. Like, nah, bitch, I don't want no kids. I told yeah. you that. People have a people have a tendency to try to make shit fit into their box, fit the fit this round peg into a square hole. Is that whatever can be? Yeah, saying. round peg and square <laughs> hole. It don't <laughs> fit. It don't fit. <laughs> yeah, people gotta stop. Stop that. You can't make that person into yo. The one thing I've learned over life is you can't change people, man. I don't give a fuck who they are. They could be your mama, your daddy, your girlfriend, your wife, whatever. You can't change people. The only thing that changes people is crazy circumstances 
or near death experiences, you're not going to change a person, bro. Period. Let's be let's be clear. Having personal goals in life, and that's a good thing. Everybody should have a goal. Somebody should be looking for the finish line. Yeah. But you can't be with a person and you're trying to change their goals because they, hey, maybe their goals ain't kids, ain't the husband and wife, the white picket fence. Maybe they shit is an apartment, high rise. They never have kids. They live, they're just living life as it comes. That's not the person for you. Okay, let them go. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Maybe their values is different. Maybe they feel it's okay to have a bunch of guys' friends calling them and and at all times at night, and they don't care if you got female friends calling you all times at night. Maybe they say little sexual jokes here and there, but nobody means no harm about it. It's just that just that we this is what we do. It's May not align with you. Define a sexual joke. I'm just saying, girl. You know my dick yeah. big, man. Your ass and that to your you're fucking ass, wife. Yeah. I'm nigga. just saying. No, nah, I'm saying you. your girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Like, you know my dick girl. big. <laughs> yeah, like, yo, how? Like, <laughs> if a girl texts, "How was my ass looking in them? How was my ass looking in them jeans tonight?" And you're like, "Yeah, that shit was crazy." Same way. Maybe your that's ass on the street, bitch, because that's where you about to be. <laughs> <laughs> but, <I'm saying. laughs> but maybe that's something she's been doing her whole life with this one person, and they never, ever. Even thought about crossing that line, but they have that's what they do. Now no. you're in this shit. You either gotta accept it or move the fuck on, like yo, or maybe this person parties too much. Bitch, you always at a club or the fucking bar every fucking day. Come home. When are you ever come, home? Come home. That's what, they, one of what Kevin was saying though earlier. Yeah, when, exactly. When you, when you get into them relationships after already being in some shit. You kind of ain't got time for nothing that they talk yeah. about. Like, I was, that shit right there to me, especially if I, you know what I mean, if me and her was done for some reason. If a motherfucker texting you that shit, bro, I don't need to get mad. Why would I get mad? I just walk away. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Real easy, too. <laughs> but I'm saying that's 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 your values and your goals. Them shits is not lying the fuck up, bitch. You doing too much. You got to go. But some people will... Sit in a relationship like that, knowing their values is different, knowing that their goals in life is different, and swear, like you said, I'm going to change this person over time. I'm going to just keep being persistent at it, and eventually you're going. You know what's going to happen? Twenty years gone, this person will be like, you know what? I know that you've been trying to change me this whole time. I've told you you can't change me. I'm done with you. I'm gonna make you love me. Oh, they're gonna tell you I'm done with you. They're gonna tell you they're done with you. After you've been trying to change this person, that will speak. crush your fucking soul. I wouldn't be there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't be there anyway, buddy. As soon as a motherfucker texts her some crazy shit, I'm like, oh, word. That's, that was but Johnny. Johnny be tripping. But saying, but, but, out. but saying your girl parties too much. And you've been saying this for like five years. And now you Eddie think, Murphy. all right, all right, we're 35. I've been with you since I was 25. It's been 10 years now. You got to slow down. Now we got two kids. No, the shit still the shit is still going on. It's like, oh my gosh, I just wasted ten years, two kids with this fucking person, because I didn't catch on to this shit five years ago. Mm, that's something that you had to learn in your life. Yes. There are life lessons out there that teach you something, okay? And you have to realize, uh, I hate ultimatums, but that's an ultimatum. Hey man, you either got to stop going out, or we're done. You'll be by yourself. Exactly. We ain't got no kids. You should make that before you're making like engage, getting engaged to a person or or having the kids or making kids. Not you, nigga. You got not you me because I'm, I'm the worst. Yeah, I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all this shit, them bitches. motherfucker. I'm giving y'all this game <laughs> off experience. I'm giving you this game off experience. I done did some fuck. I ain't motherfuckers. Most of the time, it might have been me. Kev, <laughs> shoot first, ask questions and later. later. You goddamn right. Don't do that shit. Don't shoot off the hip. I'm like, oh, you wasn't that nigga I was supposed to hit. Get what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm dead I was ass, talking about babies, man. to be clear. Babies. Talk about babies. <laughs> Not literally shooting babies, but shooting babies into somebody. <laughs> right. Correct. Yes. That nigga say, I don't care what kind of person you are. Take this kid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Take this kid. <laughs> <laughs> Pregnant first. Ask questions later. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, bro.
You look like I look like I want to get pussy from you the rest of my life. I'm gonna give you this baby, so I got an excuse. I'm just joking. That's not really what I do that for. But <laughs> I'm just giving y'all some real. This is just a real game. Holy shit! <laughs> it's a real game, man. Like take it from a motherfucker who's been there. And find out where your goals is at in life, man. What y'all got y'all, what y'all values is, man. Because if the, I'm serious, like that, like motherfuckers really think you can change a person, their goals and their values in life. You cannot. Ch- this is something. This is something inherent to them. You can't change that shit. Never. Tr- trust me, Dre. You got some goals and some values in your life. You would never change for not even Erica. It's some values that you hold dear to yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And it has to be. And and that's the thing. Motherfuckers got to decide if they down for the ride or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That person. You got non-debatable goals or non-debatable values. You know what I'm saying? And then you have certain shit that you can amend. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, there's both exist, but you have to decide what you on board for, man. Take control of your life, whoever you are. Like, don't just let life happen to you. And I mean, um, with relationships as well. Don't just accept whatever comes. Vet that shit, bro. Vet that shit. If that girl is a hoe and you know she a hoe and you don't want to be with a hoe, don't try to change that hoe into a housewife. Same thing with a man. Don't try to change that man into a house man. No? Yeah, I don't think that works. It definitely creates resentment. You gonna resent that person and resent yourself. Yes. Oh. Regret, man. Regret. Okay. You don't want that. All right. Saying that, that's we're gonna wrap that shit up right there. Leave it at there, man. You know what I mean? Hopefully, y'all took this information. Y'all can use this shit in y'all lives, man. It's, you know, we out. You're so cool. Oh shit. Peace. <laughs> I, I ain't rude. You're awkward. I'm, <laughs> You're I'm awkward. fucking awkward. I'm giving these niggas the radio <laughs> outro that you motherfuckers needed. All right. Now everybody. I'm done fucking recording. <laughs>